Welcome back, everybody. I am Carex, and we are continuing on this beginner playthrough for Castile for Europa Universalis 4. With all DLCs active, um, man, you guys are the crazy people using all the DLCs, or maybe just a chunk of them or a majority of them or something like that, right? Not literally all of them, but, but the meaningful ones, the good ones, the ones that were recommended for you to pick up with the game when you did your research and you got the game. Um, so some of the stuff I might be doing, if you are missing one DLC here, one DLC there, might be a little bit foreign, but maybe most of, at least we're covering most of the different features that you could sort of see yourself noticing in your own game. Um, but for the most part, we have just finished the war against Portugal. We have taken them as a P, they are now a PU under us. They are actually disloyal. They have a negative opinion of us. Of course, we were at war, we broke the alliance, we rejected an alliance, aggressive expansion, declared war on them. Uh, they forced us into a union, all this negative modifier stuff, right? They're at 66% liberty desire. That's 50% is when it gets to bingo. And they can start to seek aid from other countries. They could ask France to support them. They could ask England to support them. If these countries jump on to support them, they'll feel emboldened to attack us. And they also just won't help us. They won't give us money. They won't help us in war and stuff like that if they are um, liberty desire over 50%. So we just, we want them to be loyal. Now, there's a few different ways that we can do this actually it actually would have been i i'm kind of thinking of something now and it would have been kind of interesting to we can't pay their entire debt but paying debt is a really good way to sort of help with with liberty desire um but we can look at our different options here one thing we can do here is it says we can reduce liberty desire by 20 percent at the cost of 10 percent of their monthly income so i think what this means is we we're not going to um i don't know if this hurts their monthly income or if this makes it so that uh, we don't get to take their monthly income or we take less of their monthly income or something. I'm not even sure. They're, they're at a deficit right now. It's not great. We do want to try to embolden them to be able to colonize the new world. Um, but this is going to just immediately... This is going to immediately reduce that 20%, though. I was hoping that we'd actually be able to spend prestige. Sometimes you get, with vassals, you can spend prestige to help. But in this case, yeah, I think in this case, um, we can pay off their debts eventually, but for now I'm just going to as enable support for loyalists. And we could disable this later, that's totally fine. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go in here, and that's going to make them loyal. So they're now loyal, but they're obviously still not happy. So we, we still need to send a diplomat over here to, to ease them quite a bit here. Um, if we look at Aragon, yeah, Portugal is still not loyal. Now, we're quite a bit more powerful than Portugal, so likeliness is, likelihood is they will... Oh, here, wait a second. We got Rebellion. We got Rebellion down here. Let me tell you about Rebellion. <laughs> let's, get these, let's get these troops down here to deal with the North African Rebellions. We are going to have to subsidize the income of Portugal to help them colonize. They are loyal. We, can, we can't get a royal marriage with people that we've... Well, we already ruled their royal house. Their royal house is our royal house. There's no one really over there to get a royal marriage with. Um, so, but we can just butter them up with a diplomat. And that'll be a long process, but for the most part, we have time to do it because they are loyal at the moment. We have these guys about to rise up on us. Algerians, potentially. The Moroccans, for sure. Moroccans, in a couple different senses, it looks like Portuguese have a little bit of a Moroccan sort of rebellion going on there. What I actually want to do is let's get all of our ships organized. Let's get all of our ships organized. I'm going to do... So if I do it like this, it grabs our troops. If I hold control, it grabs our ships. Okay, so if you're trying to box select units and you you and you and keep getting your, your, your land units, it prioritizes land units always, but I'm using control so that it defaults to... Um, naval units and it ignores land units. You can never grab land and uh, naval and land units at the same time. That just doesn't work. In fact, I think even if we do shift, yeah, even if we do shift grab, it doesn't work like we can do shift grab with here with our troops though. Okay, so we got everybody grouped up here. What I want to do is I want to send 3,000, I think 3,000 is going to be enough. If we can take 3,000 guys with our conquistador to the new world, they can start exploring the new world. He's got a really good maneuver stat too, so he's gonna be fast down there. He's gonna be moving and grooving. Let's 
get them over here. They're going to take some attrition going across the Atlantic. That's a dangerous voyage right there. Hopefully they survive. We'll have to see. Honestly, we'll have to see. Um, let's get a fleet protecting trade in. Looks like Safi is the most valuable um, of the of the between Safi and Tunis. I don't think we really need to protect trade in, in um, Seville because I think for the most part we're just dominating the Seville node as it is. Right, we're dominating as it is. Now, have we finished any of these? It says reclaim Portugal. Now, this is going to happen eventually because eventually Portugal will be integrated into our country. Um, the Italian ambition. This is telling us to actually sort of control or take over Naples. Um, so, so it doesn't count that we control Portugal. We need to actually conquer Portugal. Here, though, if we make Naples into a subject of ours, this would count and we would... Per continue to get more claims on Italy, it looks like. Interesting to see that Venice is getting wrecked by Ferrara. I wonder what is the situation there? Austria, Hungary, Baden, Geneva, Ferrara, all attacking Venice there. Venice is getting crushed. That's how things go. Luca's actually having a good game right now. Ferrara's having a good game. Genoa's not so much. In fact, Provence is popping off in a big way. So now the funny thing is because we own Iberia, we can start looking to start to dissect uh, Provence, right? Aragon has claims on Provence. We could take this land for Aragon. We can continue to sort of conquer in this area. We have personal claims on Naples, but we've decided that, hey, maybe we're actually going to befriend Naples. We don't know exactly, right? We're still kind of figuring out what to do there. Let's get some... We need claims on Morocco. We need claims on Tlemcen. Although I think for the most part, we have good claims on Tlemcen, but more would be more would be better. We also want claims on Tunis. Does does um, does Aragon have claims on Tunis? What we could do is go back to our own diplomatic screen. We're doing a lot of maintenance here, guys. We've already set this as, as land that we want, so so Aragon should be getting claims on that eventually. Eventually. They're kind of taking their time here. I hate to say it. I hate to scare the Italians, but let's just mark all of this. Let's just see if, if Aragon will, will get claims on any of this region over here at all. Um, but I think we need to be building manual claims on Morocco. We look, we do have this mission that'll give us 20% more colonial range. We, now that we're touching down in the Caribbean, that doesn't actually do anything for us, to be completely honest. This is almost done, like, fingers crossed that that'll get done in this millennia. Um... <laughs> I'm just looking down to see if Portugal's doing anything down here, if, like, England's snuck down there. No, England's not going to be colonizing for a while, I, I believe, uh, from what we can tell. So this mission, if we finish this mission, though, presumably we'll be able to get this mission, and that'll give us extra settler, ooh, nice, extra settler increase. Now, we could wait to try to do that but when we have an additional settler, but it's still going to be a while before we do that. I think settling faster now is better than settling faster later, so I think we hit this. Because we've discovered the Caribbean, we can hit that. So we're going to colonize faster in all of these different areas. We're getting some missions are happening here, or some events are popping up. We can actually hit this because we've landed in the Caribbean. Okay, so that's going to give us 20 more. So these are all tons of really good positive stacking modifiers here. Now it's telling us to form Havana. So Havana is actually going to be over here in this area, isn't it? Which one of these is Havana? Havana is this one specifically, but I think that whole sort of area there. Um, so we should actually be colonizing at a furious pace right now. 40, it says 45. I don't know if that's updated quite yet. I don't know if this is fully updated. We'll have to see what that looks like in a month. Sometimes the numbers take a month to update. Sometimes they don't. It says we could also be working on the Spanish main. Five provinces, currently zero, owned by you or your non-tributary subject in Colonial Colombia. Colonial Colombia. Okay, Colonial Colombia is in the... Um, and sort of this region here, right? Venezuela, Colombia, Peru, Guatemala, so on and so forth. So that's going to be a little bit before we get there, but that gives us, ooh, that gives us a lot of permanent claims, and it gives us an amazing conquistador. Hmm, cool. We actually got some prestige for that. We didn't need the prestige, but oh well, it's okay. Now we can use prestige to get rid of our air, but our air is, I'm actually thinking our air is not that terrible. Um, we could redu reduce our, our legitimacy by 20. It is maxed right now. And then we could also uh, hit our prestige by 50. It is 
pretty high and it's going down fast and we could we can get rid of this we can let our air take over which is a two four four which is better than a, a two three three and we could try to start like working towards getting a better air you know what let's abdicate enrique here uh the enrique the fourth and let's get a new enrique <laughs> on the throne um it's kind of unnecessary to do this though because they're kind of equivalent they're kind of equivalent they're not great they're really both not great We'll let we'll let we'll let it just flow there. Uh, over here, what we can do is we can actually um, summon a diet. We can seize the land, and then we can figure out who we want to butter up here. Okay, they want a church in that province. That's a good high development province. I think that's a totally fine way to do that. I think we will make a church in this province here. I just recognized the name. I knew this was the one that we dev boosted for the Renaissance. So we need to build a church here. Well, you know what? We have the money to do that. Let's do that. And the church in this province is going to be a point, a 0 0.18. That's a good church. That is a good church. We have too many diplomatic relationships. We know that because Portugal is now the fifth diplomatic relationship. So we have Navarra, Aragon, Portugal. Those guys are under us at PU. And Naples is an ally. Now, I'm still hoping that we're going to be able to sort of do some shenanigans on Naples. Although I'm noticing that the Naples leader right now is like totally not a... Um, is totally not our dynasty. We need this heir to take over because that guy is our dynasty. Uh, the Pope is our friend. The Pope is our friend. But I don't know if we... You know what? We might drop the Pope. I don't want to lose diplomatic points. Sorry, Pope. We're powerful enough on our own here. Because we're losing one point per month because of that additional diplomatic relationship. Uh, Naples, I mean, technically, well, Naples, uh, yeah, Naples, I think, is someone that we can integrate into our country in the future. We're not really using a lot of our Pope powers over here, to be honest. Oh, what we could do is we could actually reduce inflation. I think we do have an inflation issue. It's, it's starting to creep up on us here. 2.5% inflation, so having that go down for the next few years will be nice. Instead of going up because of the gold, right, we're, we're getting inflation from the gold. More administrative power, uh, fantastic, there you go. Let's make sure we're building a, a spy network on here. Whoa! Big rebellion over here in Portugal. What's this all about? Let's bring these guys home. I did not see those guys that were... I didn't see those guys were going to be rebelling on us. We can get... Oh, we can get a new trader. Good. Okay, trader. What can we do with this trader? Can we reach down here yet? Answer that is no. What's... Why can't we reach down here? We could reach to here, but we, we could reach to Brazil, but we can't reach there. We can't reach the Caribbean. Once we I think once these areas are settled, I think we will get that reach. It seems weird to me that we own this, but we don't like reach down here. Uh, maybe once this is finished, because that is part of that trade note as well. So maybe once this is finished, we'll be able to get the thing. Man, 45, I gotta say, that's not amazing. Um, but we are getting 20, actually what we're getting is a 25% chance per month. At an extra settler, that's or extra extra of a handful of settlers to, to do on a monthly basis. That's really really good, and that is a scary looking rebellion right there. I'm not gonna lie. Twenty or twenty thousand nobles. Those are pretty fierce fighters. Let's actually switch positions here. Let's get these guys over here. Oh, I I bet you these guys are, are ready to uh, start exploring the new world. Okay, move them over. They've taken a little bit of attrition. That's just how it goes. Let's land them in the new world. That's going to take a month or two for them to make that an amphibious assault. On, it's, it's not an assault. I just mean that amphibious landing there. Because there's no ports here, right? So they're just kind of like uh, embarking with, uh, with the longboats, I guess. Okay, so let's get this guy to land. There we go. Now he's landed. We can actually have them hunt for the seven seas. Go completely automated. There you go. Go have fun, dudes. Go have fun. Portugal's opinion of us will get reduced. That's okay. It's going to go away. It's, it's, it's modified. It'll go away. Um, you know, we could not be paying for our navy. Or Let's have a couple ships hunting pirates. You know what? I don't even think we need to hunt pirates anymore. And we don't even really need cogs because as much, but they're pretty cheap. So we'll leave the cogs in working condition. 
Nice. Extra settler increase rate. Global settler increase rate and settler chance. Beautiful. Really good mission there. So Portugal is a little unhappy with us because of that, that mission, right? Or that event popped up and they, and they got a little grumpy with us. Now we're working on them every month. And we can go... There we go. Uh, but what we could do to kind of like give them a little bit of a boost, a little kick in the pants, is I think helping them with the rebels I think will help. And then also I think we can develop their land and we'll reduce it by five for every development. We can actually go in here and develop Portugal's land. Since we have a lot of military points, we almost wouldn't mind doing that. And that would actually make them quite happy. Missionary strength, we're not really looking to convert anything at the moment in terms of needing to convert something. All of this land up here is definitely not of our religion. However, it's not being natively affecting our religious unity. That is the benefit of making it a trade company. The trade company doesn't really care if the people that live there, like they have more, they have a, a tolerance for people that are a different religion. And, and our country doesn't really care that these people that live in these areas are, are following a different religion. We just don't care. That's going to give us more tolerance in the true faith, more like reduced uh, unrest specifically in the territories that... Um, I think they like the fact that we help them with the rebels, maybe, or maybe that's a modifier here. I, I'm not sure. There's so many modifiers there. If we just wait a few months. I think Portugal will um, will forgive us. Get these guys down in position to deal with these rebels. Once these rebels are done, for the most part, uh, building up on Tunis would be really important too, right? Building a spy network there. We don't have enough diplomats. Having more diplomats would be great. Oh, that's right. We got that extra merchant. We earned that new merchant from that idea group. We said we can't reach there. Can't reach there because we're working on that. We can technically reach a Brazil, but there's no point because just moving value to here doesn't really help get it to Seville necessarily. Um, what we could do is we could try to just stick this merchant in Genoa and just try to snag some money from here. We don't really have any power. You can see there's no percentage here. That merchant, though, I think will give us just a little, a little ounce of, of a little... We're earning zero there. Hmm. Let's see what happens next month. Yeah, we can't reach Alexandria because if we could move from Alexandria to Tunis, that would make sense. We're making basically nothing from that. Hmm. Let's recall. Let's actually try collecting in um, in Valencia and see if this works. I don't know. I'm not sure what to do with this fourth guy. We're very close to needing a lot of... The merchants will come in an immense use in the future, but right now it's like... Yeah, we're earning not much there either. Yikes. I am not impressed. I am not impressed with what that merchant's doing. We just have to remember that we got to get that merchant like queued in down here. Once these colonies, once these colonies finished, we'll need that merchant in other places. Totally fine. We're going at seventy per. This is actually going to finish. Our first colony is going to finish, guys. Hooray! Hooray! We don't need military points as much as we need admin. Admin very precious. Very precious. Uh, the heavies are mothballed, but let's consolidate the cogs there. We have built the. Um, Oh no, the Portuguese, they're engaging here, you doofuses. Can we save them? We saved them. We saved them. It's going to hurt their manpower a little bit, though. So that is the Moroccan separatists taken care of. So we don't have to worry about those guys rising up for a long time. Because every time there's a rebellion, guys, we can, we can go and look at the unrest. It says negative 92% on this province, right? The unrest screen here. We haven't actually gone through everything on this screen because some of this stuff is like you could hire mercenaries. and so I, I tend to do this stuff through the build, the production interface, and just click on either buildings down here. We can work on building buildings, or we can come up here and build troops, or we can build here. And, and I like doing it that way. Um, but you can do it from here, too. We haven't gone through everything. That's my point. There's some uh, trade company down here. You can only make uh, provinces a trade company if they're not on your your main continent, your main subregion. So for us, that is Western Europe. Western Europe cannot be a trade company, but North Africa can be a trade company. South Africa, North Africa, the Levant, Eastern Europe, these can all be made into trade companies, but not Western Europe. These are little province modifiers here to say that there is minus 100% chance of unrest because of local rebellion, local recent uprising, recent uprising. So, and that's going to apply to all of these areas here that had Moroccan separatists, even all the way down to here. So none of these areas are looking to rise up. All of it gets that modifier because they had their chance. They had their chance. Now these guys, for the most part, I think they're only 8,000 apiece. We have 14,000 troops over here. We give them... Well, it's kind of interesting. That is a Highlands. 
you know, I don't even think we're going to worry about giving them a general. I don't think we're even going to bother. I'm going to sit these guys on Tangiers and we're just going to drill, drill, drill. We're going to drill them. We have a new thing we can get up here. We can actually get the Justified Wars, which reduces aggressive expansion impact. If we start taking land from Europe, if we take, if we attack Provence, which is totally valid, uh, they're allied to France, so that makes it a little tricky. <laughs> that makes it a little trickier. Um, but if we took Provence, that would absolutely uh, cause a lot of fuss in this region. The aggressive expansion down here, we're taking advantage of the fact that, that most of Europe, most of our Catholic friends, don't care if we beat these countries up. If we try to beat up um, European Catholics, the Europeans are going to be very upset about that. They're going to be very defensive about that. We're going to be an instantly labeled warmonger, essentially. Apparently, we already have some claims with Morocco. Oh, we already have one on Sus. I forgot that we had that. Hmm. We probably could have taken that one, so we need to get to 25 with Morocco before we can get the thing there. We're still working on Portugal. We need to get them all the way back up into the positives. They're loyal, but they're still kind of grumpy in terms of their opinion about us. Too many diplomatic relations. I think we said we were going to get rid of the Pope, didn't we? Yeah, you know, sadly, Pope. I think the Pope is... Um, I wonder, does this actually give us 70 in like one burst? Or is that like an average per month? I'm actually not sure how that works. Let's see if this actually works by the end of the... As we move into January 1490, guys. We're colonizing the New World. I also want to try to actually give... Portugal a little bit of oomph to see if they'll be willing to colonize like in Brazil and stuff. Like so what we could try to do is we could try to give them like subsidies. Like we could go look at their economy and see if they're doing well or not. Aragon's making money, right? Aragon's making money. Navarra is making barely any money. Part of that is because they're trying to pay for a castle. Portugal is actually making some good money as it is. Portugal is making some good money as it is. We could try to give them more money to try to encourage their colonial expansion. I don't see them colonizing anything yet. Oh, nope, they've touched down in the Caribbean, and they're going fast. 105 per, woo. They're going fast. We actually, ooh, they've done a couple already down here. Whoa, yo, Portugal, hold on, bro. Okay, um, we're going to, basically, there's a, there's a thing in the New World where the Catholics don't, basically, they get blessed by the church to colonize certain regions. Portugal's actually got a leg up on us here. Um, I think we want to finish this one, and then we want to work on Havana. Havana's going to be very important, but I think Portugal's going to beat us to the punch in the Caribbean. That's going to be okay. Portugal is essentially under our control, and that's okay if they take over that. I think we'll actually start working in either the Colombian region or um, in, in sort of finishing that mission, because we need five provinces specifically in the colonial Colombia region. So we could work on that area instead and let Portugal kind of do their thing. I think also it makes sense to kind of lock up West Coast Africa too, because we know that uh, England's going to want that. But no, I guess the answer to the question was no, it doesn't just instantly give us the 70. It's 70 throughout the whole year. So every month we're getting a little bit sort of drizzled into this province here. 35% chance of attracting extra settlers each month. I don't know if that's like double or if that's like, how, like 10, like a fixed amount or not. There we go. We finished that colony though. Hooray. Is this still out of our, our zone or whatever? And it says that it is. Uh, let's We could wait till next month to see if that's actually true. Um, we know we need to do Havana. Interesting. This is actually well out of our colonial range. Hmm. Even with that colonial range boost that we had. That is out of our colonial range. Even with a 50% boost from here. So we can't quite grab Havana. We have a mission specifically for... Does Havana... Wait a second. Does this mission found Havana? Okay. That's just that's just one province. Five provinces owned by you or your non-tributary subject. In the West Cuba, East Cuba. Okay. This is telling us to actually go for a different... Where's Bonnie? Where's Bonnie? Hmm. Hmm. Now, if Portugal colonizes this, I think it counts for us, but I'm a little... I don't know. So 
I don't know whether we double down on the Caribbean. We can't reach that anyways. That's the thing. We just can't reach it anyways. It says we can reach... No, can't. That's also saying it's part of the Caribbean node. What I'm looking for is I'm seeing, are there any important trade centers here? And there is one over here in the Panama. This is all part of the Caribbean Trade Center. In terms of colonial regions, let's let's get uh, let's get this colonial region going, I guess. Get that colonial region going here, and it'll start working on sort of the Spanish main. We have enough to get a claim on Morocco, a second... Marrakesh and Swiss are the two most valuable provinces in this area. Um, so grabbing those would be, would be invaluable. Um, but it makes sense that we'll want one here too, which will be the final place that we can actually gain a claim on Morocco. So we'll keep working on that. Over here, we have the ability to get a claim here. We already have claims on these two provinces, so we just need to grab another one. This one connects to both of these, so I think that's a good one to grab. Strictly speaking, we probably don't need more claims on Tlemcen. Tlemcen's truce ends in one year. We could be attacking them, which is kind of crazy. I don't think the tutorial is going to go that long. <laughs> Just because I think for the most part, guys, there we go. We're expanding our colonial empire. Uh, Portugal is colonizing for us, right? They're our interested personal union. When we integrate Portugal, we will obtain their colonial nations and their colonial influence, which is pretty cool. And eventually we will integrate these guys. As Spain is going to essentially gobble up Aragon instantly. But to integrate Portugal, we're going to have to wait 50 years. We're going to have to make them super happy, which will happen over time. All these negative modifiers are going away per year. You can see the yearly total of opinion change is actually positive, right? Because there's a ton of negative stuff here that's burning away. That's burning away. But we'll be able to integrate these guys after 50 years in, in stuff, and we'll be able to kind of work on Portugal if we want. Uh, we can lose some innovativeness or gain some innovativeness. This is for a province that I think has basically negative 11% unrest. Not really, the unrest there is not really a big deal. We'll spend a little prestige for a little bit of innovativeness. Innovativeness just uh, is like a, it's not a big deal. It's really not. We're losing probably some of this. We're gaining some of it right now currently because we're ahead of time on technologies, but um, we're not going to probably maintain this forever. This just makes it a little bit cheaper. All power costs are reduced just slightly. This can go up to 100. It's very hard to maintain. But there you go. We have some more money here. Actually, I'm kind of wondering, does it count? No, it does not count ones that are controlled by your subjects. Because clearly, like, Lisboa is level 2, Valencia is level 2. Those don't count, though. We can, it's saying we can invest in technology, though. Hmm. What technology might that be? Uh, military technology. I think instead we're going to try to finish these out. We're to try to finish these out and then go back to working on our technologies. Military, though, I, the interesting thing is about 10 years colonialism is going to spawn. And I think for the most part, unless France gets exploration. Nope, they went economic into offensive. They're, they're taking the long way around in terms of colonizing. England is way behind. England is really struggling technologically um, in terms of how many ideas they're getting and, and so on and so forth. Getting a level 2 guy here would be really good. Making money per month is also really good. So I'm thinking maybe we go with a cheaper guy just to save some money. We might, and because I don't really love either of these advisors here, we don't really need a, a inquisitor to colonize anything. Some free uh, population in one of our colonies. Nice. So we're getting some good favorable events. Some of that is because our conquistador is doing things and moving about and stuff. And he's uh, encountering natives and, and we're getting little options there. And we can get some little rewards and things from that. And some of it is uh, just random things based on the ideas we have because we've taken exploration ideas, because we've taken expansion ideas. We're getting little favorable events that help sort of keep rolling the snowball that direction, which is kind of nice. But we're looking really good, guys. This playthrough, we're looking very powerful. It is only, it's only, it's not even 50 years into the game. We own all of Iberia. Portugal is colonizing for us. We're colonizing the world. No one else is touching the new world. We are... Uh, dominating North Africa, we have the entire coast of North Africa minus sort of, well, the entire eastern, or sorry, western coast of North Africa up to sort of the Tunis area. 
Guys, thanks everybody for hanging out. Really appreciate it. If you guys have questions, please ask down below. Of course, there is a playlist for this series. We also have an Ottoman tutorial on the channel. If you guys are actually listening to me right now, you guys are like the crazies that actually like watch the entirety of the last episode in the long series going on and on and on about the game. So thanks for being here, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, leave a comment down below. I'll, I'll read it and respond to it, guaranteed. I, I read all that stuff. I respond to 90% of it. So thanks everybody for being here. Um, and uh, I will see you guys in the next one where I hope to, I think we're going to eventually make a similar tutorial for England um, and keep trying to just improve and try to expand the library of tutorials. Right now it's like, okay, well, if you want to, if you want to look at Portugal's perspective, we, we have one for Portugal. If you want to look at Muscovy, we have one for Muscovy. If you want to look at one for Castile, we have Castile now. If you want to look at one for Ottomans, we have Ottomans. Let's do England. Let's do France. Let's do Austria. Maybe let's do Poland. Let's do Brandenburg. Let's, let's like keep doing these things. Let's create a library and archive of tutorials not for people not to expect people to watch all of them but just to give people the choice as to which ones they want to watch and also let's keep getting better at teaching the game ourselves uh guys thank you so much everybody for hanging out i will see you guys in the next episode